Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a numerical number 2 or problem number 2 which is based on properties of Z transform. Now my suggestion is before moving to solution just go through the all the properties that we have derived till now. Now what is the question? Determine the Z transform of signal and their ROC which means first of all we have to find out the Z transform of this whole function and then we'll move on to ROC. But first of all what is the ROC? I can say that X of N is having a two sided ROC. How? Because look at here. The reason is this U of N is having ROC and it is a right handed sided and U of minus N minus 1 is having a left handed sided ROC. So X of N it gives us a combination of right handed sided ROC as well as a left handed sided ROC. So I can say that X of N gives us a two sided ROC. Now we will find out first of all Z transform and then we will move on to ROC. So first of all what was the question? a raised to n u of n plus b raised to n u of minus n minus 1. Which property you are going to use? Here we have a raised to n which means we will use a time scaling property. But first of all we will apply a z transform on both the sides. Now look at here, Z transform X of N is X of Z, but on left hand side if we have X of Z and right hand side we have a Z transform A raised to N U of N into B raised to N U of N minus 1 minus 1. Now look at here, we can use here time scaling property. Now look at here, what we have on right hand side, Z transform A raised to N U of N plus B raised to N U of minus N minus 1. Look at it, which property we can use. First of all, we have to separate these two functions or you can say we have to apply Z transform separately on these two functions. So which property you will going to use first? Of course, the linearity property. Linearity property is the property which will give us a Z transform of both these functions separately. So Z transform X of N can be represented by X of Z and then I'll apply Z transform on separately on both the sides. Now what is the next step? Of course we will be going to use a time scaling property but before of that first of all we should know what is the z transform of u of n and what is the z transform of u of minus n minus 1. So first of all I will calculate that and then we will move on to properties. So let's say this is my equation number 1. Now what is the next step? As I said we will apply a z transform on u of n and then we will apply a time scaling property on it. Now we have calculated the z transform in earlier videos that is in z transform of all the unit step x sequence or you can say all the standard sequence we have derived. Now just go through that video so that you will get the idea what is the z transform of u of n. Now z transform of u of n is z upon z minus 1. Also in that video also we have solved a ROC of unit step and the ROC of unit step was available on outside part of unit circle or exterior part of unit circle. Now we will find out the Z transform. Basically U of N is a right handed sided signal and left handed sided signal of U of N is represented by u of minus n minus 1. So z transform both this function that is right handed sided u of n and left handed sided u of n is same. Only the change is this left handed sided u of n signal is multiplied by a minus sign. Now what about ROC? The ROC of this function is 
available interior part of the unit circle or inside the unit circle. So we can write mod z is less than 1. Now what is the next step? Now we will apply a time scaling property on equation number 1. What you will get? A raised to u of n z transform is first of all, what was the answer? A unit step response in z transform represented by u of z. But if we apply time scaling property on it, then all the z available in unit step response will be replaced by z by a, which means all these two z will be replaced by z by a. So if I multiply numerator and denominator by a, what will happen? If we multiply numerator by a, then a will get cancelled. We have a numerator only a z. Similarly, look at it. If I multiply denominator first part by a, then a will get cancelled. Only we have a z and minus 1 is multiplied by a. So we have a z minus a at the end. Similarly, we will apply this time scaling property on next part. We are going to apply time scaling property on u of minus n minus 1. As we know that the z transform of u of minus n minus 1 is similar to the z transform of u of n only the change is minus sign is there. Now what we are going to do if we apply a time scaling property then all the z will be replaced by z by a. So here we have b so we have z by b z by b minus 1 now what is the next step just simply multiply numerator and denominator by b b if i multiply numerator by b then both these b will get cancelled only z will be there in numerator side similarly if i multiply denominator part whole part by b then in first part the 2b will get cancelled only we have a z minus 1 into b answer is b but what about roc Basically, in first case, the ROC is available where outside the unit circle and in second part, look at it, ROC is available inside the unit circle. So, in this case, the ROC is available outside the unit circle and here we have ROC which is available inside the unit circle. Now, so as I told you, if we combine both this for question or if we combine both this part, then ROC will also get combined and this will gives us a two-sided ROC. So I have substituted the value of A raised to in U of N and A raised to B raised to in U of minus N minus 1 in this question number 1 or you can say equation number 1. Now as I told you, this one gives us a ROC which is mod z is greater than 1 or you can say z upon z minus a gives us a ROC which is greater than 1 or you can say the outside or exterior part of unit circle and this will gives us a ROC which is available inside or interior part of the unit circle. So if we combine both the things then what you can say actually this one is nothing but my a and this one is nothing but my b. So I can represent it by So what I can say, I can combine these two ROC, how I will show you. Here mod z is greater than a or you can say a is less than mod z. So here I have written a is less than mod z, mod z is greater than a. So here I have written mod z is greater than a and in second part what we have written mod z is less than b. So here also I have written mod z is less than b. So what you can say that we have two circles a first radius is a another is having radius b. Look at here I will considering this a is available over here. Now this b is also a pole and it is available over here. And as I said, your ROC is available inside the or you can see in between A and B circle. So, this is the Z transform of that function and this is the ROC of this function. 
so my suggestion important one is just go through all the properties that we have derived till now and second important one is if such type of question asks for five marks only then take a help of properties and solve the or give the answer but if such type of question asks for 10 marks then don't go for roc solve it in a proper way just apply z transform on both the sides and then calculate the answer and then go for solution thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikeda and subscribe ikeda for further more videos thank you so much